Hey there guys, it's Jesse, and this is a very special video. I recently had the chance to sit down and talk with Richard A. Knack, the man behind many WoW books, Diablo books, and not to mention, series of his own. His newest book called Wolfheart takes place in the Warcraft universe and focuses on Varian Rin. I'd give you a little bit more information than that, but we already do enough of that in the interview, and this book is heavy spoiler territory. But before we start, because I loves yous, I'll give you a little something. A slight movement in the opposite direction caught Yadric's attention. The doe, acting only on her instincts and unable to meld those with common sense, had chosen the inopportune time to begin running again. The worgen lunged after her. Varian waited for a moment, then stepped from the tree. If Yadric was here, the Lord of Stormwind considered, then his master could not be far. The bow once again ready, Varian moved in the direction from which Yadric had come. The worgen hunted as a pack, to a point. Being also men, those like Gen would seek their individual kills. Varian retraced Yadric's path, moving through the brush as readily as the worgen. His eyes constantly surveyed the vicinity, and his ears and nose sought signs of his prey. And at last, he saw a worgen who could only be the Gilnean king. And that is just an incredibly small taste of this book. If you're a fan of the Worgen, you're going to love this one. So without further ado, let's jump into this interview. Richard, I just want to thank you for coming on uh, to talk to myself, especially myself, but all the fans who are listening, watching right now. For those of you who don't know, this is the man responsible for stuff like Day of the Dragon and The Well of Eternity and Stormridge. Pretty much everything that if you're going to play the new patch that's coming up, 4.3, you probably should know. And if you plan on playing Diablo, this is the superstar behind the uh, Sin War series. So, yeah, you probably should read that too. Uh, but uh, Richard's new book is called Wolfheart. And uh, let's just imagine for a moment that you live under a rock, or the people watching right now aren't WoW fans at all. Uh, Richard, can you give us a brief like story, like rundown of the story of, of what people can expect in this book, uh, or what it is about, like who or what is Wolfheart? Well, Wolfheart refers to uh, King Varian Wren of Stormwind, uh, who, is a, who has had a very, very um, interesting life show. So he's been a slave, a gladiator, uh, lost his memory for quite a long time, amongst other things. And um, he is a character who has both the potential to be the person to to bring about the stronger alliance of the dwarves and the night elves and the human stuff to face the, uh, on on the oncoming horde plans, or he has a chance to also cause everything to splinter about if he cannot uh, come to grips with his own situations. Uh, at, at present time in this world, there's been a terrible cataclysm um, that has basically sundered the entire world and all the nations, all the races are trying to recover. And that's what makes it more important that, that, we, that Varian come to grips with his situations and see if he can be willing to take on the mantle that people are trying to thrust on him. He's not so sure if he wants to. And in the meantime, it also means that he might have to make decisions about other characters that he loathes, but that might be important to the survival of the Alliance. In the meantime, the situations between the Alliance and, and their counterpart, the Horde, are growing worse, especially in the area of Ashenvale. And uh, while there's a uh, move going on from the Horde toward expanding their holdings there at the expense of the Night Elves and others, there are situations going on back in the Night Elf capital that may cause even further splintering of uh, the alliance. I think that I, I think that probably puts it in a nutshell and doesn't doesn't uh, give away any spoilers. I've actually delved into the book, and, and one of the things that I really was impressed with was the uh, storyline taking place. Well, I'm trying. Let, let's let's not too many spoilers, but the Ashenvale storyline is great because. No matter which side you played on, the, the Horde or the Alliance side, you really felt like, wow, something really important is going to happen here. And I like this book is, is the culmination of all of that. That was, that was definitely a significant storyline. Obviously one very much dealing with, uh, with Varian's situation. 
uh, the thing is, this is a very complex world, and you know, both sides have their merits and their deficiencies. Uh, this is not just a one year one year old black and white, you know, hero villain sort of sort of game world. These, you know, the, there's very much to respect on either side, and you can understand why each side is doing what it is doing. And so I, I like to hope in this book that I have presented both sides fairly, and that uh, you can see that while one looks bad to the other, uh, that uh, that you can you can certainly sympathize in part with which with what's happening. And this actually is a question, I, I guess, about the process of making books. Then, especially video game related books with such a heavy backstory and lore, uh, I I can't help but wonder how do you go about writing like let's take Wolfheart for example writing this story when I, I, I doubt I mean maybe I don't know I, I can't assume that Chris Messen just shows up one day and he's like yeah all right so we need a book about Barry and Wren go right? I mean what what is the, what is the process of, of putting this together how do you come up with with this uh, sto- this overall storyline that fits so well into the world how many steps do you have to go through and, and how many checks do you have to get to like, oh, OK, this scene's good. I mean, what is the process involved here? Well, there are a number of uh, things that go on. And yes, uh, Chris is, is there at the start. Uh, he's part of the group that uh, formulates what is the next thing we want to tell in the novels and how is it going to tie in with what we are doing in the game. Uh, there's a good group of people. You mentioned Chris. Uh, Mick Nielsen is the, is the publishing lead. And, and uh, James Wall also worked with me on these uh, on a number of these books, and uh, they and the others that involved, uh, including the lore people, um, have done an excellent jo- excellent job, been wonderful to work with. But essentially, what happens is they will come up with the notion of what what idea they want to see in a book, and then they will present that along with um, a, a suggestion of what elements they would also that would also be important to show, since those elements will be up in the game. Then I uh, take those and I kind of come up with a synopsis where I expand on them, where I try to bring in elements that I think also tie in. And uh, what will happen is they'll look over my synopsis, and then they may tell me, well, we like how this is going, let's expand on this. And we want you, and after what you said here, maybe we should change direction and go here. And, so we, and then they'll send it back to me, I'll rewrite it again. And they'll go back and forth a few times until eventually we have something that... Uh, has uh, been really a really uh, well thought out between all of us, um, and I'm very pleased with their feedback on all this because obviously they know the game inside and out more than anybody could, and uh, so that allows that allows me to ask questions on on certain subjects that they're that they haven't put out yet on the game to see if I can use those also, and then finally when that's all done I could one last synopsis they check for anything. That, that might have changed from in the game since we discussed it first, because uh, things are always changing in the game. Uh, and, uh, and then they'll give me the okay to start working on the first draft. And uh, between them and the lore people, we you know we try to keep all the all the facts in place. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but we've been trying to keep tie everything together, keep it cohesive. And uh, it's been a it's been a really terrific way to work. Um, you know, a lot of feedback, which which I have not always seen from some companies I've worked with. But uh, with, but uh, Blizzard has been great to deal with. I I think the feedback comes from the fact that I, I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking about this. Um, your work, a lot of it at least, ends up actually in the game uh, sometime after you've written it. Like I I know that they're adding um, a uh, dungeon. Uh, I think it's a five man that's based off of the whole. Uh, all the stuff that happened during the Well of Eternity, th- things like that, where they're taking stuff that you, along with the team, created and throwing it in the game, which I think is great because it, it gives it that uh, these books actually do matter. There's one thing that I know a lot of fans hate. It's when you have stories that relate to a subject that they really love, and then uh, somewhere along the line someone says, oh, those aren't canon. They're just, you know, stories. And that I know that drives people crazy. I trust me. It, it, as far as Blizzard is concerned, the novels, from what I, I've been told, are considered canon. Um, sometimes, because of how much World of Warcraft has grown, they do have to adjust some things. For instance, you know, the people who remember the game from human orcs and humans, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed from that to World of Warcraft, and that's just because you know, as they've as they've delved further into the world, they realize that you know. 
these situations must be adjusted because it makes more sense. Um, it, you know, they, they try very hard uh, to please the, the, the gamers and the readers, and uh, the books are one way of bridging those situations, you know, where, where we have to ch- make some changes. Uh, I've been asked to make some adjustments in the world, you know, so that they could, for instance, uh, have more Blue Dragons back again. Um, and and other situations have shown up along the way, you know, so, but uh, I, they really, really appreciate the, the people who play the game, read the books, and they're just, they're just trying to uh, come up with uh, the best entertainment they can. This is a question that I've actually received uh, from a lot of fans. I, I put a uh, post out there. I said, give me one or two questions that you really want to know. Really, really want to know. And this is one that I got from almost everyone. I hope I can answer it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? So so do I. Because even I'm curious about this. But it's one of those ones that almost seems like personal to a writer. So we'll find out here. Um, can we talk about Crassus? Um, in regard to his demise? Yes, that's what people people want to know. What your thoughts are, and well, and have, they want to know if we'll ever see him again. Ah, uh, I of course uh, I'm sorry that to see his passing. Um, he's been a character very much uh, enjoyed by many people, and of course he's one of my favorite creations. Um, he I put him through a few trials along the way. Here he get the, he pretty much almost died in Night of the Dragon as it is. Um, I understood, I knew a long time ago that they were intending this. And uh, I understood why, because I discussed it with them uh, on, on how the situation was going to be done. And it, was, it certainly made sense that it had to do with it in the book that Christie was working in. Um, so I, I perfectly understood it, because I, I had all the faith in Christie. You know, so um, I respect their decision and her, and her use of it. I, of course, m- myself, I would like to have them on a little bit longer. Um, if I could have done his demise in one of my stories, that's fine. But but it, it made perfect sense in her in her novel, so that's why I was I was happy that it was going that way at least. So I I give them full kudos on that. Um, whether or not there's some way he could return, that is, uh, is something that uh, only Blizzard could say for sure. Um, I I can tell you that I absolutely do not know anything about that. Uh, but uh, believe me, um, should it ever happen, I will be jumping up for joy. Like I said, I, I'm very, I'm, I have the highest respect for what Sheila Christie has done and what uh, Billy has decided to do with the character. I think that he, um, he's left his mark uh, mostly for the good with people, and, um, and uh, I think that elements of what he's done in the past will still be showing up in the game, so to speak. With that said, then, uh, maybe Crassus is the answer to this. I'm not sure. But the second question that people wanted to know was, what is your all-time favorite character that you've written about or that is the most intriguing to you in lore who you would like to write about? Oh, that might might be a multiple-answer question. Um, Of the ones I've written, first of all, um, boy, I've written some really fascinating characters. Uh, Nelfurion, for instance. Um, Varian, I, I was really happy to delve into Varian. Um, he's been a character I've been kind of following, and I really enjoyed him. And to be able to work to work into his situation, you know, that was uh, a lot of fun there. So he, he would be way up there. Um, obviously, Crassus, I always enjoy working with there. But uh, just, uh, but in terms of uh, in terms, I think Varian right now I'm very keen on, and uh, so I hope to be able to do something else with him again. And in terms of my other, my own characters right now, if there's a character I would like to be able to do something with, this might surprise you. I would like to see if I could do anything else someday with, uh, again, with Trag High Mountain, the, the, the dead, undead Torin. Huh. Here's uh, the Mongols, and now he's a Death Knight in the game. That, that's, that is a really interesting answer, yeah. I always like Minotaurs, and so I like Torrens. And there's, there's just something about that character, you know, that... that uh, um, I feel that he that he has more to a story that I would love to do if they ever let me in. It's it's interesting because most of the undead characters that we see in lore or in stories or books or or uh, comics or whatever are are human, and I think it's like this. Oh well, they're back from the dead, and we can relate to them kind of. Thing. But there's so many other races that are that are undead that I think not to tap that is kind of a, a letdown. So you saying Torin undead is amazing. I love that answer. That's great. Oh uh, yeah. Like I said, let me, let me do something with Trag High Mountain. I'd be very happy. <laughs> I guess this is a question I had to write down 
because it's one of those ones that I, I was trying to think out in my head to ask you, and uh, hopefully I won't butcher this, but it's um, after reading all these post-Cataclysm books and seeing the overall path the storyline is taking with all of WoW, uh, I have to wonder, where do you personally... Get, uh, I'm not sure... Uh, how much you follow the story of Thrall, but I assume enough to know exactly what's going on. Where do you think yeah. the path between Varian and Thrall will take them? Because these two characters, essentially at their core, are like a after everything we've seen, are pretty much the same. A one has except you know one has decided to contain his his rage, and the other has decided to unleash it. I'm curious where you think or where you would like to see that story take them. Because even though they're they're technically leaders of opposite factions, they are very similar. Yes, they, they are. And But I, I'll tell you right now, um, I can't really answer too much on that because there are things I know. Uh-oh. Uh, so I, so I um, am going to be a little bit uh, troubled on uh, to be able to answer this one. I will say that I think that uh, based on, on Wolfheart, um, Varian obviously is, still, is going to have to continue to, to delve into his own troubled background and continue to work on, on being coming to grips with it. Which, fortunately, with the uh, with him pay, finally taking up the mantle in a situation uh, in the situation in this uh, you know, being presented with the situation as in Wolfheart, I'm giving I'm, I think I'm giving spoilers all of a sudden here, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> just a little. That's okay. That's okay. Anyway, um, let's just say that I think that he's, he's on the right path, and hopefully he can stay on it. Um, I do see the similarities between him and Thrall, and of course there are differences too, obviously. And uh, it, it's interesting that it will be interesting to see how much those paths combine, you know, look similar and how much they diverge in the way they are. Let's not forget, though, that Garash is also now pretty much in charge of things. Yeah, I was about to ask that. Uh, if, if you had a... Uh perfect choice of a fate for Garage. Like, if, if you could just come out and be like, you know, just the, 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 the lore master of WoW for a minute. Uh, fans hate this guy. Like, they just, everyone despises him. And the, all he wants to do is rule, but everyone hates him. Like, if you could give him a proper way to go, what would you give him? Uh, I would give him a fate that he deserves. That could be good or bad, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> all right, then. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not. Gonna, I cannot really go into that one. It's, I'm just gonna say that whatever fate he, whatever fate is being pointed toward him, I'm sure he will deserve it. Okay, I can take that answer. And, and there's one final question that doesn't even relate to WoW. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know: Are there any more Diablo books coming down the pipeline? Uh, at present, um, I cannot say that there, is, that there is, but I know that they 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 um, they are still thinking of what they're planning. With the, obviously with Diablo 3 getting near and near. Um, I did notice, and maybe it's just a glitch, I did notice that on Amazon once recently somebody told me that there seemed to be like a box set for the Sin War coming out uh, later this year. But they, I, that's what somebody told me, so I'm going to have to go look at that myself. I actually but, think there is. Uh, I remember reading during the uh, Diablo 3 press release that they said that there was something along those lines coming out, and it was it had like a funky new packaging and stuff. I think I remember seeing something like that. Yeah, because I, I was well into Wolfheart and a, and another, a couple other things at that time when, when that's where I was announced. So um, the, the Diablo stuff, I'm a little bit behind on, on what the latest news is. So, um, but I, 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 somebody told me that, and I, I pretty much t uh, took the, the word for it since they were pretty dependable. So which is kind of nice to know. I. Uh, so something like that, since those are books I wrote a long time ago, and being a box that, you know, the publisher doesn't initially tell you right away what's happening, and then you find out, like, you know, just a month before it comes out or something like that. <laughs> uh, but I'm always happy when, when they do something with the books. And I enjoy the Diablo stuff. I get, I get a lot of uh, fan, reader mail asking me if, uh, if I'm going to be doing something else or, if, or telling me how much they enjoy this book or that. Uh, well, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of people like to see some of the characters that, that I've worked with before, you know. So, uh, and it was a fun world, but it depends what path they're going to be taking with it. I know it's going to be a bit darker, I think, than it used to be, even. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm just glad some of the stuff that I've written about has become the basis for the the the, the world background. So. Especially Diablo three, yeah. I mean, pretty much everything in the Sin War is in the game now. 
uh, to some also, extent. Also, elements like from Kingdom of Shadow, uh, from the Lost City of Yura is, is in there. Yeah, I'm very excited. Diablo 3 is one of the uh, games that I'm really looking forward to. And is, the fact it, that there's so much over. knowledge out there about it, like the books you've written, it, it's, it's a great read before you go in to play the game. I appreciate it. it, it, it Diablo 3 was overdue. I mean, I knew for, for two years before they announced it that it was coming. And so you know, people kept going, you know, I mean, you, you know, why haven't you told us if a game is coming out? And I was like, because I can't tell you. <laughs> I signed an NDA. Ah, uh, the NDA. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yes, and and I appreciate why why they're trying to keep things you know under wraps until they're done. I mean, they want to make sure that things are well in order before they start presenting it. And I can appreciate that, believe me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That is uh, my interview with the uh, amazing author Richard A. Nack. Uh, we got Wolfheart, Storm Rage. The whole Day of the Dragon series, Well of Eternity, uh, the Sin War series, Diablo. I mean, come on. If you are a fan of any lore of uh, pretty much any Blizzard game, this man has written something about it. Uh, I just want to thank you for coming by and talking with us today. This, this was a blast. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you to your listeners uh, for enjoying the books. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching, listening, whatever you were doing. And uh, more is on the way. I love doing this kind of stuff, and I can't wait to see what kind of cool things are in the future. So again, thank you all, and to be continued.